Oliver's Army, cracking that tune. Aids are enjoying that one. Right, our Linda's here. Ha ha. Right. I'm not talking uh, to you, so you may far away there. I'm not. I'm really not. All right, you know. Gary, that's a, our guy, that's a very unkind angle for me. I have no when he's filming this. Listen, there's no kind angle. I'm close up. <laughs> You know, it would, it would make people think I'm carrying a bit of beef, that, uh, that angle. It's not you know, true. No. It's totally false. No, it is. I remember saying, who was it I says to her? She says, oh, the camera puts on 10 pounds. And then Lisa says to me, how many cameras was on you? <laughs> 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 boom, boom. Look at On Weller. Desperate. Hey, you got your hair done? We blow dry. No, we men cut. don't get their hair done. Men get their hair cut. They don't. It's don't a done. A, it's, it's a not do. Done. It is a it's do. Cut. Uh, well, it looks well. I'm afraid that I don't want to turn the other way. He's not even going to move that camera to no. give me a more favourable angle. No. I'll just smile at that bit there. <laughs> oh, it's not on bake, but Guy's oh. going to put this up later. Right, can I ask you something? Because you, you, see, you, you talk about the stars. You know, I'm not talking about the stars in the sky, the celebrities, and they all favour one side. Do you know? I mean, I'm not saying that you don't have a good side because you're my brother and I love you, but do you have a good side? Is there always one side you favour when you're getting your photograph taken? No. But they're, both, they're both as gorgeous as each other. <laughs> but why do the stars the, the stars always say that? Because you're both sides no, of the face the yes, No, apparently, yes, uh, photographers and artists and all would tell you, people uh, have a good side and a bad uh, side, you know. But I don't know, because mine are both perfect, so I don't know uh, what the, the good side I is. I tried to have a wee look, but... Do you know who Pat Mustard is? No. <laughs> the sexiest milkman in Ireland? No, do you not know? No. Should watch Father Ted, because he's going, the women love me because I'm gorgeous. And he's a, and he's a big, big coachy with a moustache and all, you know, and he's, he's about 20 stone. And all the women love him in craggy islands. But that's, see, I, I go along with Pat Mustard. So, the women going, love you because you're gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, you know. Right, I wanted to ask you a question. Go. Do, do you know the way they're trying to decrease the use of plastics in everyday life? So one of the things that they think is going to go by next year, he's looking at himself in the go. camera, I'm not is Q-tips. Which means... Q-tips? You mean a cotton bud? Yes. Q-tips is an American thing. Is it? Well, you know I love that place. But anyway, what that means is you can't stick anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. Hold on. Just re reverse a couple of yards there. You can't stick anything smaller. Where, where does this phrase come from? Like you're not told that when you were young. Don't be sticking anything smaller in your elbow in your ear. Why, was there a, a, a fad for sticking your elbow in your own ear? I don't know. Was that not a thing you're told when you're kids? Don't be putting anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. No, yeah. You, smaller uh, than your what, elbow. What, what planet were you reared on? <laughs> and I was there as well. Like, but <laughs> don't stick anything. You're not supposed to put anything in your ear. Right, no. Anything at all. No, no. But neither but Q people do. Yes, but now that Q-tips are gone, you're... Elbows. But you're not supposed to put anything in your ear. No. That's not what they're for. No. The, the Q-tips originally were, cotton buds were for cleaning, you know, the wrinkly bits of your ear. Mm -hmm. Not for putting in your ear. I know, but people but people did. used to do it. And going, ah, why is my eardrum perforated? You can get And Why, why am I corned beef? Uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. sticking. No, don't stick anything in Sometimes your ear. Sometimes you get an itchy ear. And oh, you, you do. Get you do. It. You know, so how are you going to, you're going to be like a dog? Yeah. Because they can't use Q-tips because they don't have fingers. Did you thumbs. go and see a film? Never mind. Sorry, yes, I did. I went to see Rampage. Right, what is it? It's the most unlikely film when you see the ad and you think, oh, this is going to be so tacky and so awful. And it is part, probably. No. If, if you've gone to see it. I did go and see it. Yeah, but if, if you've gone, chances are it's, you know, not going to win many awards. No, I did. I went, our Patrick went, Kieran went. And we thought it was really well, good. Tell us about it then. Oh, sorry. Right, so... The, it is the film review. The Rock is in it. He's obviously I mean, not in the name of sweet. I don't have to. It's your <laughs> film review. I can't remember what it's about. <laughs> so, yes. So, a genetic mishap happens and a gorilla... He doesn't like to be called a monkey. A gorilla uh, sucks in some of the gas from the genetic stuff. Right. And he becomes a normal gorilla into a 90-foot gorilla. Right. And that also happens to a dog, no, a wolf who becomes a 40-foot wolf. Yeah. And so they're on the rampage in the city that they're in. 
and that's what's rampaging. They're wrecking on the buildings and they're killing all the people and the rocks trying to sort this oh, out. Oh, the rock. You should have said Dwayne Johnson's in it then yes. we would have known it was nonsense. No, it was very ah, good. Ah, he doesn't get any script longer than about three words. Listen, you it, know was, what I mean? it was very good. And it, I like the rock. It was very loud. But after that time I beat him up, I felt sorry for him. <laughs> it, was, it was very loud and it was very, the special effects were brilliant and it was just, I thought it was brilliant. It was better than what I thought it was going to be. It was a really good film. No, it looks like nonsense. Absolute <sighs> magamba. He's such a you know, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in it? Is there anybody else in it? Is it just him? I can't remember. Our John was telling me, you know, The Rock goes to the gym at half six in the morning mm -hmm. and trains like for, he does an hour and a half warm up yeah. before he starts training. Yeah. But he spends about six and a half hours a day in the gym. Oh, he looks it. It's only an hour more than me. I know, exactly. You need to do the extra hour. <laughs> <laughs> we like the rock. <laughs> Brick. But listen, come the boulder. Come on, quickly, miss. Did, 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 another wee just another wee tiny guy, film in, in case people are going to go and see it. It's the Literary Potato Peel Pie Society. If you fancy going to see it, go. It's absolutely brilliant. It's set in World, the Channel Islands, yes, World War Two. Just after World War Two, Guernsey, and it's oh my goodness, it just is so good. Bring your mummy, bring your granny, go with your friends. You're going to love it. Right. Um, yes. The top of a Bic pen is a great thing for hooking out your lugs. Oh. Says Mark. Mark the trucker. That's a bit harsh. Uh, this is where we put it. Do not try this at home, folks. Kids. Mark the trucker <laughs> is not an experienced <laughs> ear, nose and throat specialist. <laughs> we don't want... Where's um, the old big? We don't want the <laughs> casualty units ringing saying, we've had 500 people in the day with a top of big pens in their ears. Get on. You know? Sorry, I can't hear you. I've got a big pen thing in my ear. Listen, I want to play a tune. Okay. I'll be back to you, um, unfortunately, <laughs> shortly. Bye. Charlie Puth and the tension. Yo, he, he took a wee pause there. <laughs> Yo, get in there. Right, I'm not going to mention you in technology. No. Because you Look are a disaster. I, Do you read uh, the destructions? Yeah. No, no, you don't. That's why things don't work. You see these, you know, they come with instructions in a wee booklet. And even if you want to read them in Japanese, you know, they print them in 20 languages and all. But you throw it in a bin and then you phone me and say, that gadget that I bought isn't working properly. <laughs> but I, listen, do you know the way you don't and can't do DIY? That's not your thing. Yeah. Your thing is something else. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but you have a, another thing. Being gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the milk run in Craggy Island. <laughs> but my thing is not technology. That's our Patrick's thing. So No, no. I, I, I'm telling you there is a solution. They give you instructions with all of these things. You don't just take it out of the box and go, right, work. <laughs> Do something. <laughs> it's not working. That's not working. Have you plugged it in? I'm not plugging it in. Is the battery dead? I don't know. The battery's in a separate box. She does. Oh, honest to God. Seriously does. You expect the thing to crawl out of the box itself and go, hello, I'm here. What is it you want done? Just has. Listen. Talking about clearing your ears out. Yes. Johnny, I scratch my ear with a leg of my glasses. <laughs> says Diggle. <laughs> no, what do you hear? Um, Johnny, using the, um, the bick for your ear, and afterwards I sharpen it a bit, and it does for hooking out my teeth. <laughs> Somebody else? Dear me. Um, oh, no. When we were kids, my mom used to clean our ears with a hair clip, says Gary B. It's all right. A wooden coffee stirrer, says Big Clive. <laughs> Michael Oak says, a paper clip. This oh, is this is this is all gosh. stuff you're not supposed to do. No. So don't do it. I don't want the kids going home and I'll tell you the casualties were full of people with all <laughs> kinds of, you know, spoons and forks <laughs> in their ears and I think who else was um there's other people on about what they do use to clean their ears out. Just don't mm. do it. You're not mm. supposed to put anything in your ear. No. no. All right? Yes. Listen, I, I haven't got long, but I wanted to tell you. Do you know we moved into swanking new offices? Yes. I'm just showing, it, showing everybody. <laughs> and it's brilliant. Everything's state of the art. Uh -huh. My primary concern, of course, was, is there a kettle? Uh -huh. And then uh, Peter told me very proudly, you don't need a kettle. We've got one of those water taps that when you turn it a particular way uh -huh. and boiling water comes uh -huh. up. So you can make your tea right away, which is class. Uh -huh. right? It is. The thing about, do you know how when you tell people that paint's wet, don't touch it, mm. what's the first thing they do? Touch it. Go and go, ah, mm. oh, you're right, there's paint, there's paint all over me now, you know? So, when the, the, the hot water thing was first installed, and it was gag, anybody was going to get hot water, people were crowding around to watch them and all. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, 
I went, got my hot water, and I'm thinking, that couldn't be warm enough coming out that quick. <laughs> couldn't be. Couldn't, couldn't be. So the girls from Seals were all standing watching me. And they didn't say a word, and I went, ah! I did it at night time. Put, put my finger in just to make sure it was warm enough. It's boiling water. And they all stood and laughed. And they says, we all did that. <laughs> I did it at night time, too. So now and again, you were walking along the office, and all you hear is, ah! <laughs> Somebody's making tea, and they still don't believe that the water's hot enough. It's, it's mental. Everybody, everybody does it. You know, it's like, you just hear these wee yelps from all over the place. And you did it as well. I did it at night time. That, that does not shock me. No. Let's be honest. No. Okay, well, just uh, different people there. Johnny, when I was growing up in Twinklebrook, we lived around a corner from you, and I thought Linda looked really cool and reminded me of Susie Quattro. Jacqueline, keep taking the tablets and get extra <laughs> ones for your lamps. Look like Susie Quattro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Johnny, when my son was in primary school, he put the end of a pencil in his ear uh, to scratch it, but the rubber on the end of the pencil came <gasps> off and got stuck in his ear. He had to go to the health centre to get it taken out. <laughs> yeah, Eamon and Carrick Fergus. Uh, well, they say, don't put anything in your ear. Somebody else saying, uh, my ear's blocked and it's going to take six weeks before I can get it cleared out. Mm-hmm. See, sometimes my ears would block up a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's wax. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, that's it. you got to go and get uh, syringed and all. Well, thank you for that thought. Yes, okay. Right, but at least when they're not picking various implements out of my ears. <laughs> God knows what ears are going to be like when they clear them out. I'd be shopping trolleys and all. Like <laughs> Snooker balls. <laughs> TV remotes. <laughs> that's where it went. <laughs> Right, remember you lost your phone? Yes. What happened? Oh, my mommy stole passage. it. Mommy stole it. So I lost my phone for two days, and Ma- then I says, Mum, lend us your phone. I just need it for the car in case you would break down, because that's the day you'll break down when you don't have it, because yeah. I don't have my phone all the time. And <laughs> she opened her bag, and she says, there you go. I says, that's my phone, you klepto. Yeah, all right. <laughs> she left it my phone. Oh, well. Right, I'm away. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.